Hey YouTube, long time no talk. I know it's been a while and I don't wanna say I apologize for that because I was doing what I needed to do to be able to get my mental in order, like my mindset, my creativity, just my vibe, my energy, everything. Just re refocusing, recentering. So I'm very happy that I did that, but I know that I didn't say that I was gonna go on a break or anything like that. So for those who actually watch my videos, I do apologize for that. Today, what I wanted to talk about just came to my mind. And it's that sometimes we are the problem. Like a lot of times, you know, I don't know if you've been like me where we're like playing victim or it's this person or that, or maybe you have that friend who's always like, all my friends hate me. There's always drama. There's always these things. And the one constant thing when you talk to them is this person. Like you are the constant, all of these dramatic experiences or dramatic relationships, you are the common denominator. And so sometimes you are the problem. But my message today is that you're also the solution. It's okay to, you know, it's okay to realize that, okay, I have issues that I need to resolve. It's okay to ask for forgiveness. It's okay to acknowledge that you have a fault in this situation. This could be in relationships. This can be in a job. This could be in anything really. But taking responsibility like that to me is the ultimate act of like, in, not intelligence, of, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Of maturity even emotional maturity, taking responsibility. I know for me this last month, I've had a few low points where I said things out of being reactive because I was in a low point. I was emotional. I was just going through it that I didn't mean to say. Not, if, not that they weren't the right thing or the truth, but it's how I conveyed it. And I had to take responsibility for myself. Like, you were wrong. You shouldn't have said it like that. Maybe what you said or what I said was true, but it didn't have to be conveyed or presented in that way. And that's just an example. Like this could be speaking to people. It could be reacting to people. It could be just texting wild things, speaking what's directly on your mind versus thinking about it. And I had to sit back and say, wow, you've got really low. Like you've got to the point where <laughs> I was ashamed of myself, like not proud of myself, not for what was said, but for how I said it and when I said it and not giving the people involved the opportunity to be able to speak up and kind of say their piece. And that's what I, that's kind of where I, this video is going. It's not gonna be anything long or anything like that, but just start to think about in situations where you could be the problem, but you also could be the solution where you have to sit back and examine your thoughts, examine your actions and say, man, where did I play a part? And you know, when you do this, it actually gives you more power. Because when you're saying, oh, it's their fault, it's their fault, it's their fault, blaming everybody else around you, that means that you're giving away your power. But when you could take responsibility, even sometimes when it's not your fault, to be honest, that is giving, or I'm sorry, that is keeping your power, not giving it away. And that is like the lesson of today, take whatever you want from this video, but that is it. Don't give your power away. Take time to examine where you could be wrong and where you could fix, forgive, and also ask for forgiveness. In my case, I prayed about it, I journaled, and this is something I've just been examining and journaling about praying just for the last like month. And it's not just one single situation. This is multiple times I've noticed in my past where I've been wrong and I wouldn't admit it. But there's been plenty of times when I was wrong and I would. I'm just saying with certain individuals and in certain circumstances, I've noticed I won't do it. And it's maybe it's because of what I feel like they've done to me, but Still, I still owed it to myself and to them to admit like, hey, you messed up. And I know there's this like stigma that women always, we believe we're never wrong. Like the wife's always right. Happy wife, happy life. I used to believe in those things and I actually have a video coming out kind of talking about beliefs that I used to resonate with that I don't anymore. I don't believe all women are right. I don't believe all men are right. No person is always right. And that's why we have to realize that we're imperfect and it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to admit we have fault. It's okay to pivot and be able to grow and realize, okay, this individual that I was doesn't have to be me now. And even sometimes what you could do is even if you, your ultimate, your, your natural reaction is to just react and get mad in the moment, stop and just be like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm so sorry. Like I didn't mean to do that. Or immediately afterwards, you know, say you're sorry. I just need some time to think because then it's still teaching your brain like, okay, We've had this reaction before, but we don't have to keep having this reaction going forward. Another exercise I've heard of is imagining it. So say for instance, like for me, say I text something out of reactivity to someone. 
I say they say something to me and I don't like it and I just text them out of reactivity. But they didn't mean that. I just text them because I felt like what they said in this text message was a certain tone, but maybe this person did not say it with that particular tone, but I received it that way. So say I did re retaliate immediately and say, you know, whatever it is and just went hard on them. And then immediately after that, if, even if you don't apologize right away, imagine what you would have done differently. Like immediately stop and say, okay, if I was the better version of myself. If I was the version of myself that I want to be a year from now, how would she react? How would he react? And then imagine yourself doing that instead. And then after that, of course, I would apologize <laughs> and probably on the phone because unfortunately, text messaging, any type of written form of communication could be misinterpreted because even video gets misinterpreted. I've had videos where I've said something with a certain energy, a certain intention, but people perceived it how they wanted to perceive it. So check out that video. I had a video, I think it's called Triggers Are Our Mirrors, something like that, or Make Your Mess Your Message. But that video I think is a good example that, you know, sometimes we do get triggered by things that wouldn't, isn't supposed to be triggering. Like it's the truth, but the person needs to hear it or see it in order to trigger them to change or trigger them to acknowledge or trigger them to move forward. So that is the message. Uh, I wanted to keep it short and simple. I'm just trying to get back into the groove of recording again. You know, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, let me know what you guys have been up to since I've been gone. Anything good happen, anything you need prayer for, or just me to send you, you know, some positive thoughts or anything like that. Let me know in the comments. Yeah, so thanks as always for watching and I'll see you in the next video with all my love, Lana.